I've done around 70 episodes about St. John Bosco's life on this channel, and I can tell you that today's story, without a shadow of a doubt, is my absolute favorite, because it talks about his loving kindness towards the Oratory Boys, a virtue that can only be born from charity. The Miracles and Prophecies of St. John Bosco, a project of America Needs Fatima. I'm your host, Matthew Miller. Subscribe for new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. While Don Bosco attended to the religious and moral well-being of more than 700 young people who were part of the festive oratory of St. Francis de Sales, he also watched over the thousand young people who attended oratories of St. Louis Gonzaga and the Guardian Angel, never forgetting about the poor youngsters of his growing hospice. Indeed, he regarded them as the apple of his eye, and he cared for them as much as the most solicitous and affectionate fathers would have. One year, his pupils numbered about 40. Parish priests, relatives, and others wrote to him almost continuously to recommend some child to be put in his care. Don Bosco listened to so many miseries, and he felt greatly moved by them. Fearing that a given boy would come to a bad end if he refused to receive him, he often took the child in. He couldn't resist, especially the appeals made by the youngsters themselves. In 1884, the school inspector of La Spezia, Signore Bonino Alvaro, told us the following incredible account of something he witnessed when he attended the oratory as a catechist, being a municipal elementary teacher in 1850. A father had become a Protestant in Turin to receive 30 denarii which the enemies of God paid for apostasies. The wretch demanded that his wife and son likewise convert to Protestantism. Still, the good woman was firm in religion and held her son back also. They were Savoyards from an area in northwestern Italy ruled by the Savoy dynasty. Because of her husband's wretched apostasy, the poor mother wept and prayed. One night, her son had a dream. He felt that he was being dragged to the temple of the Protestants and struggled in vain to resist. While he was struggling in the dream, a priest appeared freed him and led him away. He awoke in the morning and described the dream to his mother. She sought every chance to shelter her son in some institution, for his father would not abandon his wicked divisiveness. She came across a person who advised her to visit Don Bosco in Valdoco to see if she could find refuge for her son in the oratory. She went there with her boy on a Sunday morning. They entered church when she learned it was time for mass and Don Bosco proceeded to celebrate. Signore Bonino Alvaro knelt beside the little boy. Then, as soon as the boy saw Don Bosco, he cried out, Mama, Mama, it's him! It's him! It's really him! That's the priest who appeared in my dream! The little boy screamed and his mother cried. After reminding the family that the church was no place to scream like that, Signore Bonino saw that he could not quiet the little boy. So he led the mother and son to the sacristy, where he heard the account of the dream and how the son recognized the liberating priest in Don Bosco. When our saint returned to the sacristy after having finished celebrating the sacrifice of the mass, and before he could remove his vestments, the boy ran to clasp his knees, pleading, My father, save me! Don Bosco accepted the boy into the oratory, and the young man stayed there for many years. How many other endangered young men did Don Bosco save once he met them himself and welcomed them into his home? One day he entered a particular cafe in Turin and a young man came to serve him. As the apprentice poured coffee, Don Bosco began to ask about his life. Question by question, the priest sounded out the boy's heart. Don Bosco's fatherly manners won over the young man. He kept no secrets from Don Bosco and revealed to him the entire state of his soul, which was deplorable. The conversation was interrupted from time to time as the young man went to serve new patrons. Still, he always returned to Don Bosco's side upon finishing his duties. Don Bosco spoke in a whisper, and no one, not even the cafe's owner, noticed that they were having such a serious discussion. Don Bosco ended by saying to him, Ask your master's permission to come to the oratory, and then some things can be decided. But my master will never allow this, the apprentice said. But you must not stay any longer in this place, Don Bosco replied. I know, I understand that, the young man answered. But how do I do it? 
Just run away, Don Bosco said. But where to, the young man protested. Don Bosco suggested, to your relatives. I have none, the apprentice explained. They're all dead. I'm completely alone. Then come with me, the priest invited him. To where? To Valdoco, at the address I'll give you, Don Bosco said. And then what? Don Bosco answered, get your belongings and run to me as soon as possible. Make sure no one knows your intention and just come. You won't be lacking in bread. You'll have a roof over your head and an education and I will provide you with a happy future. I will be your father. Don Bosco left the workshop. The next day, the young man escaped and arrived at the oratory with his few belongings under his arm. He became an excellent Christian and was the model for the students of the oratory for several years. Thank you all so much for watching, and I really do think that's my favorite story from St. John Bosco so far. If you'd like to watch another story about St. John Bosco, just click on the video I've put on the screen. God bless you, and Our Lady keep you.